Hello. My name is Danny Engmark, and I'm the Wilderness Program Director at Camp Manitowish. Um, I'm here today to show you some photos and give a little presentation on our intermediate and Voyager outpost trips. Um, if you're watching this webinar, it's likely that you've been um, invited or you're currently registered for an intermediate or Voyager level outpost trip with Camp Manitowish. Um, so welcome, and I'm excited to share a little bit more about what these trips entail and what to expect and be able to provide a basis for you to ask some questions. So um, here we go. If you have any questions that you would like um, that uh, you would like answered after, please, please feel free to email me or give me a phone call. Um, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. So we'll start with a little overview here. Um, so we're during the course of this presentation, we're going to go over expectations from both the side of what you can expect from Camp Manitowish, as well as what we expect of all of our outpost participants um, and the expectations of each of these trips. Um, we're then going to go into more specifics on each trip level and give an idea and some photos of what those trips actually look like. Um, we'll go over a general schedule, and then I'll go over what our staff members go through in order to become prepared for the trips that they are leading. So starting with some expectations, um, we'll start first with some expectations that we as an organization have for the, the participants going on these trips. Um, so these trips are intermediate level trips are 14 days long and the Voyager level trips are nine days long. So these are significant wilderness backcountry experiences. And we expect our participants to come into these trips with previous wilderness tripping skills. A lot of those are gathered from if you were a camper here during in summer camp, um, those are the same skills that you would have learned out on trail on your other trips. Or maybe these are um, skills that you learned while camping with your family or with friends, or at another camp. So, um, so we expect sort of a basis of knowledge um, that you're going to be going out into the backcountry and have um, at least a little bit of know-how in terms of existing out there for this long of a time. We also expect our participants to be in good physical and mental health in order to actually partake on trips of this magnitude. Um, these are not easy trips. And they, you're going out and you're being challenged regularly and intentionally. Um, and so we need our participants to come in ready for that challenge and ready to overcome obstacles. We expect our participants to understand that this trip will focus on character and leadership development as a key component of the mission of Camp Manitowish. And we expect everyone to work diligently to improve themselves and the group that they're in. Um, this can be hard. A lot of times it's um, coming into these trips expecting just to go out and have a good time. And that will certainly happen over the course of 14 to 9 days. Um, but we also train our staff. And what we're all about is developing leadership skills and encouraging character growth um, over the course of these days. So you need to come in prepared and ready for that. We also expect our participants to be willing and able to work in a small group setting in a remote area for either 9 or 14 days. Um, our groups are never larger than six people, including the leader. So these are pretty small groups and in remote settings where you often won't encounter other groups for periods of time. Um, so the ability to make relationships and to build communities is important. We also expect our participants to know, understand, and accept the risks that are associated with backcountry travel. Other aspects of, this, uh, of these trips are that we expect our participants to actively take on leadership roles and responsibility throughout the trip. Something Manitowish does is we um, encourage a collaborative leadership model, which means that we aren't going out and we aren't necessarily cooking all of the meals and doing all of the work in terms of navigation and logistics. 
we hand that over as much as we can to the group members themselves so that they're able to grow and learn and come off of these trips with more skills. Um, we also expect our participants to know and abide by Camp Manitowish policies. That's both while in camp here preparing for their trips, also en route, so when they're traveling to and from their locations, and while they're out on trail. Um, these are things we don't take lightly, and they're all here just to keep people safe. Um, so we need to make sure that everyone, um, everyone is on the same page in terms of our policies. So that's a little about what we expect out of our participants when they come into these trips. Um, we also have expectations of our leaders. So our leaders will have certifications and training that is dictated by not only us as an organization, but also the American Camping Association, of which we're accredited. Um, these certifications and trainings include lifeguarding certifications, um, an 11-day staff training that includes a um, like a simulation training trip that's five days long. Um, and we expect all of our leaders to have a wilderness first responder certification, which is a medical certification. Uh, we expect our leaders to also be in good physical and mental health in order to partake in a trip of this magnitude. Um, like I said, these are long trips, and they're not only long for the participants, but they are also significant for our leaders. Our leaders are expected to work to develop each participant's leadership abilities and strengthen their character. Um, so while we expect our participants to come in ready for that, we expect our leaders to actively facilitate that growth. We expect our leaders to manage risks in an appropriate manner and um, at a level that does not knowingly jeopardize the well-being of either themselves or the participants. We expect our leaders to also be well-versed in working with small group settings for extended periods of time. And we expect our leaders to facilitate that transfer of leadership from themselves onto their participants. So that's coming from everything from cooking meals to navigating through the backcountry to making decisions on um, how they're going to approach this next stretch of travel. Um, all of these things are actively transferred from the leader to the participants, depending on how the group is functioning. Um, and likewise, we also expect our leaders to abide and enforce Camp Manitowish policies while they're in camp, while they're en route to and from their trail locations, and while they're out on their trips. So there's a lot of parallels there. And if everything goes well, then those parallels work very, very well in tandem together to create wonderful and rewarding camp and tripping experiences. I'm going to go a little now into um, the specifics of the uh, trips that we run for this length, so either 9 to 14 days. The first few trips I'm going to talk about are intermediate trips, which are the 14-day back, backpacking trips, or backcountry trips, excuse me. Um, so start with the Isle Royale backpacking trip. So this is a 14-day trip. They, um, I think it's a 20-day session. And these folks uh, will come into camp, and they'll spend a few days here getting ready before hitting the trail. Uh, Isle Royale is an island in Lake Superior. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a very, very unique and isolated environment. Um, in order to get to this island, we have these folks jump on a bus, and they'll bus up to where they can get onto a ferry, then they'll take that ferry over Lake Superior into the island where they'll spend their trip circumnavigating the whole island over the course of 14 days. Like I said, there's a really unique environment here. So there's exposed ridge lines, beautiful views of Lake Superior. Um, there's tons of berries that grow out there. and our uh, leaders and participants get pretty creative with the cooking that they have. You travel through quite a few different ecosystems while you're out there as well. And there's lots of camping right on Lake Superior as well as on some of the inland lakes um, within, lakes, or within Isle Royale. Then we have our Pioneer Canoeing Trip. So our Pioneer Canoeing Trip is a 14-day canoeing trip that goes up to the Quetico Provincial Park in Canada. 
this area is absolutely stunning. It's just over the border from the Boundary Waters in northern Minnesota. So if, as soon as you cross the border from the Boundary Waters, you are in the Quetico. Our groups will travel north to south. So we've been dropping our groups off at the very northern points of Quetico Provincial Park, and they will travel south and actually end their trips in the United States. The Quetico is an incredibly beautiful environment. Um, there's often, especially in the northern areas where we begin our trips and spend the most amount of time, it's not uncommon for these groups not to see any of their travelers for a few days. And you also get creative with some games. <laughs> And we have our sea kayaking trips that are 14 days long. Uh, this year, we're actually running two different locations for these sea kayaking trips. One is the Georgian Bay sea kayaking trip, which we've been running for um, quite a few years now. Um, this is a trip that's in Ontario, and it paddles. Um, these folks paddle on the Georgian Bay, which is in Lake Huron. And they'll paddle for 14 days. They'll bring everything they need with them. And this environment is really, really unique. You're often camping on these big, flat rocks. This is an example of a typical Georgian Bay campsite. Um, you can't really stake in your tents because you're camping on these rocks. So what you'll do is actually build, um, use, lar use larger rocks to stake down your tents, or you can actually build little piles of rocks that'll serve as anchors. And this is a new location that we're going to for the first time in 2016, um, Lake Nipigon, which is a lake that's just north of Lake Superior. It's entirely within Ontario. Um, and this lake has about 500 islands in it. So um, again, this is a really unique environment. It's very remote. Um, it's just becoming a protected wilderness area, so there are not very many folks um, traveling through these, this area. There's a lot of wonderful fishing up there, though. Um, so we're really excited to be able to offer this trip in 2016 up to Lake Nipigon for a 14-day sea kayaking trip. Lake Nipigon is known for um, its black sand beaches. Um, not only are there these incredible bluffs that you'll paddle through in these huge palisades, but also um, through these really pristine beaches that you sometimes can even camp on. Um, there's a chemical in the sand that creates a black-green color of the sand. And those are our intermediate level trips, which are the 14-day trips. So I'm going to go now into our Apostle Islands sea kayaking, which are um, the first of the Voyager level trips that I'm going to talk about. So the Apostle Island sea kayaking trip involves nine days of sea kayaking in the Apostles, which is in Lake Superior. And they spend nine days exploring through the sea caves, looking at the bluffs, and um, genuinely enjoying what Lake Superior has to offer. Then we have our canoeing Voyager trip. This uh, Voyager trip goes to the Boundary Waters, which is in northern Minnesota. Um, these folks will canoe and portage for, four, or for nine days. You can see on that map there, that red highlighted area is where the Boundary Waters are. And this is, again, a really pristine area. Paddling and portaging and working together in the wilderness is really, really rewarding up there. Typical lunch on an outpost trip there. And then we have our backpacking Voyager level trip, which is, goes to the Superior Hiking Trail. Um, Superior Hiking Trail is a trail that goes um, basically from Duluth all the way along the north shore of Lake Superior there, up to um, ending right where Canada is. 
Um, this is a trail that a lot of folks on their own time over extended periods will actually through hike. And we pick sections of this trail to hike over the course of nine days. It's just full of old growth forests, of exposed ridge lines, absolutely stunning views of the area around um, not only Lake Superior there that they can see from this vista, um, but also waterfalls all over the place with these trips. So those are our Voyager level trips. Um, so a little bit about uh, the general schedule that we have here for these folks. Um, so the intermediate sessions this year, so we run two intermediate sessions for 2016. Um, the first session is going to start on June 22nd. That's when people will actually arrive here at camp. Then for each one of these trips, no matter the length, these folks will actually stay here in camp in Boulder Junction for anywhere between three days, like two to three days. Um, they'll get ready, so they're packing out their food, they're packing out their equipment, they're making sure that they're all prepared with their personal gear, and then they hit the road. Um, and then they'll be out for the course of either 14 or nine days. Our transportation to and from these locations varies depending on the trip. Um, the Isle Royale backpacking trip, which is the 14-day backpacking trip to Isle Royale National Park, like I said, will actually take a school bus up to where the ferry takes them up to Isle Royale for the course of their trip. And then they'll do the same on the way back. So they'll take a ferry back to the mainland, um, basically right outside of Copper Harbor. and will then get picked up by the Lakeland bus and be brought here back to camp. Our Georgian Bay sea kayaking trips, our Lake Nipigon sea kayaking trips, and the Pioneer canoeing trips will all be transported to and from their locations in camp vehicles. So we have certified drivers that will take those folks up there. Um, let's see. So our um, for the Voyager level trips, all of those trips, are Apostle Island sea kayaking, the Boundary Waters canoeing, and the Superior hiking trail backpacking trips will all be transported to and from their locations with camp vehicles as well. Um, let's see. So then our the end of our first intermediate session is going to end on July 11th. So that's basically a 20-day session in total, and 14 of those 20 days are spent out on trail. And the others, um, once they get back here to camp, they'll actually spend a couple days cleaning all of their equipment, learning about how to transfer their experience back to their home life. Then our second intermediate session for the summer next uh, in 2016 will begin on July 20th and then we'll end on August 8th. So it's the same sort of schedule. Um, they spend a few days here in camp, head out for the trail, are out there for 14 days, and then they'll come back here and um, wrap everything up before heading home. Um, we run four Voyager sessions per summer as well. So the Voyager trips, which are nine-day trips, will start in um, four different times, which line up with our two-week summer camp sessions. Um, so the sessions there, there's going to be one from June 13th to June 26th. That's our first boys Voyager session. And then the second session during the summer is a girls session, which runs from June 28th through July 11th. And then we run a boys session after that, which goes from July 14th to July 27th. And we have our last Voyager session, which is a girl session running from July 29th until August 11th. If you look on our website as well, you can also find all of these dates written out. Um, all of our outpost trips and all of our um, trips in general here are all single gender. Um, so that means that um, the leader is the same gender as the participants going out on these trips. Um, our groups, like I said, are never larger than six people. Um, so that's usually about five folks per trip and then one leader. So we do only have one leader on these trips. 
our staff, speaking of our leaders, our staff go through a rigorous training process. So they are here starting in 2016. They'll be here on June 5th. And that staff training will go all the way until June 15th. Um, these folks will go on a five-day training trip. And a lot of times, these trips are going actually to the locations that they're leading their trips in, um, or one that's very similar. So the backpackers will go up to the Superior Hiking Trail. Our canoeists will go to the Boundary Waters. And our kayakers will go to the Apostle Islands, go through their training. All of these leaders also have a Wilderness First Responder certification. They are CPR certified. And they have a Wilderness Water Safety and Lifeguard certification. Our leaders are mentally and physically capable. And they are ready. And they're assessed not only when they're hired through a rigorous hiring process, but also throughout the course of the training that they go through. We're able to pinpoint what they each need to work on and facilitate that growth. Um, they're chosen based upon their judgments, upon their proven ability um, and skills and outside experiences, and as well as among many other things. And that's a little bit about our intermediate and voyager level trips. If you have any questions, my email is right here on the screen. Please don't hesitate to contact me. My um, Camp Manitowish phone number is also 715-385-2312. And that's our main line. You can also call that with any questions that you have or that might arise. Um, thank you for spending the time. And I'm excited for folks to start registering and to get signed up and then to finally go on these trips once next summer arrives. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you.